the lights, the bright lights, the tight, the crowd lights, where you at, ballers? Ladies love me and men, they wanna be me, they pay to come see me, where you at, ballers? Thunder at Pelicans, NBA Shot Clock, Monday, April 29th, 2024, the best bet of the day, Brandon Ingram over 21 and a half points. This is the fourth game of this series, and Oklahoma City is up 3-0. What does that mean? It means this is a must win for New Orleans, and it means their best player must step it up to his absolute top level a game. This is the fifth time this year Ingram has played against this number one seed Oklahoma City roster, and he's only averaging 15.25 points per game with a number coming up to 21 and a half, indicating upward movement. If you go game by game, he scored 12, then 12 again, then 18, then 19, so he is scaling up, and he is shooting 50% the last two ball games. He will score in the range of 25 to 30 tonight as New Orleans will compete in potentially the final game of their season. The best bet of the day, Monday, April 29th, 2024, NBA Shot Clock. Brandon Ingram, over 21 and a half points. Let's dominate. Celtics at Heat, Junior Brown back with NBA Shot Clock on this Monday, April 29th with another free pick. And we're rocking with the under two or three and a half in this game, now two or three and a half is a really low total for games involving the Boston Celtics. But if you just look at the possession battle, which in the playoffs to me is one of the keys, it's just not enough possessions to take at the over. These games, through three games, are averaging 90 possessions per team each. It's just not enough to get up over 200, especially with Miami only scoring 1.0 points per possession. Now, prorated over 90 possessions, it's like 96 points a game. So... I don't see any reason why Boston would change their current strategy. They are the most efficient half-court offense in the NBA. They've held Miami to under 10% transition opportunities. Miami averages closer to 15%. That's a huge reduction. And that's why Boston's winning the series. Miami had the one outlier game where they broke their record for most threes in the game with 23. If that's what you're going to rely on to be Boston, not saying it can't work because we saw Miami go to the finals last year, but that's a hope and a prayer. On top of that, Miami's not really getting easy baskets. In Game 1, Miami had 12 layups. In Games 2 and 3, they had 10 combined layups. Boston is doing exactly what they needed to do. They got the scare that needed. Uh, they needed to, you know, or the proverbial wake-up call, if that's what you want to call it. They're clicking on all cylinders. They do not need more possessions. They're going to keep holding Miami to these low transition opportunities. In the last game, Miami only had 5% of their possessions were transition opportunities. They're at 15% on the season. So expect the Boston Celtics to keep this lower pace, which suits them and which definitely hurts Miami with their inefficient half-court offense. Give me the under two or three and a half. Let's catch yet another ticket, y'all. Lakers at Nuggets, 10 o'clock, Ball Arena in Denver. A top play in this game, Denver first quarter against the spread. This is game five of the series, with Denver up three to one overall, but uncannily 0-4 ATS in the first quarter, both home and road. Denver has scored 25, 24, 23, and 23 points respectively in games one through four, incomprehensibly unable to score the ball in the first quarter. This team is a great first quarter team, particularly at home and coming off of outright losses on the road. And this is where they should bounce back to get their first first quarter cover of this series. The line is heavily on it, and Denver was 1-0 ATS against the Lakers in the first quarter at home in the regular season. The top bet in this game, a late night special, NBA shot clock on this Monday. Take the Nuggets in the first quarter against the spread, and let's cash this ticket.